This video has step-by-step -step instructions for timing a race using the Gen 7 swimming software in order to provide a basic understanding of using Gen 7 in race conditions. Running a race with the Gen 7 timer is quite straightforward and very similar to running a race with any Colorado timer. The starting official starts the race, the splits come in, the race finishes, click finished and then save and reset. Post the race results on the scoreboard, press next heat or next event and run the next race. Now let's break it down adding a few situations that may come up and how to handle them. The tutorial assumes that all hardware is already connected to your Gen 7 system and that your meet and session are already set up. These processes are described in other videos. Our sample race is Event 1, Heat 2, a 200 meter medley relay. Our pool is 10 lanes, 25 meters. This heat has only 6 teams, so we will turn off the lanes we're not using by clicking on the lane numbers. Gen 7 Swimming is in the reset state and is ready to begin timing a race. The starting official starts the race with the start system, which sounds the horn and sends the start signal to the timer. Side note, you can do a manual start by clicking the button on the top left. The keyboard shortcut is Control shift space Only use this if the timer did not start. The touchpads are inactive for a user-defined number of seconds after the start. As soon as the touchpads are ready to receive a touch, the lane indicates armed. The swimmers have made their turns at the far end of the pool and come in to touch at the near end. The swimmer in lane 5 touches first. The timer beeps at the touch and the number of completed lengths for that lane is displayed. The pad status indicator for lane 5 goes blank and the pad will not accept another touch. The timer beeps as each swimmer touches a pad. You notice that the second swimmer in lane 6 has started, but the software does not show that the previous swimmer touched the pad. In this situation, the number of completed lengths displayed for lane 6 is 0 of 8. As sometimes happens, the first swimmer touched the wall beside the pad, which does not register as a touch. To correct the missed pad touch, press the plus button for that lane. Lane 6 now shows that 2 out of 8 lengths have been completed. The split time will be missing, but the subsequent split times and finish time can be recorded. Next, imagine that the second swimmer in lane 6 is slow getting out of the pool and steps on the touchpad after its split delay time of 15 seconds is up. The pad is armed at this point and the timer registers this as a touch. Lane 6 now shows incorrectly that 6 of 8 lengths have been completed and that it is on the finish lap. To correct this, press the minus button for that lane to remove the last touch and then split arm, which will arm the pad immediately. All swimmers except the one in lane 7 touch at the end of the third leg of this relay and the final leg swimmers are in the pool. After the split delay, the lanes with valid touches display finish armed. Lane 7's length count shows 4 out of 8, and it is not finish armed. To prepare the lane for the upcoming finish touch, press the finish arm button. The length counter still displays 4 out of 8, but pad status display indicates that the pad is finish armed. The finish time and place pick will be accurate. All swimmers touch their pads successfully at the finish. The timer beeps as each swimmer finishes and displays the place picks in each lane. As soon as the race is over, click Finished and then Save and Reset. This stores the race results in memory. After the race, if you wish to post the race results on the scoreboard in place order, go to the Quick Actions menu and select the Post by Place option. Press Next Heat or Next Event. Remember, the process is simply, the starting official starts the race, the splits come in, the race finishes. Click finished and then save and reset. Post the race results on the scoreboard. Press next heat or next event.